oftentimes in marriage, people will kind of just overlook um, the aspect of equality. Um, now, I'm not talking about, you know, religious points of view or political points of view. I'm not completely circumnavigating that, okay? We're just looking at uh, the idea of marriage here and uh, more of how to be a uh, supportive spouse. Okay, so there's a few things. First off, get rid of the idea in your head that you're helping your partner whenever you do household chores. Oh, I'm helping them with the dishes. No, no, no. They're your dishes. Both of your dishes, they're, they're yours. So if you're helping them with the dishes, you're actually helping yourself with the dishes. See, it's it's not their job. It's both of your job. In English, we don't have a plural for your, so y'all. It's y'all's job. You know, um, it's not something where, you know, that's their thing. Well, as married people, we're supposed to be helping each other. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't divide the chores up. Like, for instance, um, I'll mow the yard, um, you do laundry, something like that. You know, I'm not saying you shouldn't divide up chores, whatever. But what I am saying is get rid of this idea that, well, if you work outside the house, that's all you have to do, and then it's their job to do everything else. So what I see a lot of times is, okay, well, I work outside the house, and when I come home, you know, she needs to cater to me, and that just needs to be how it be. Well, hold on. She has to take care of the house all day and all night, and you don't do anything in the house? Like, that just doesn't really fit. If she doesn't get a break, then you shouldn't get a break. It just works like that. Well, I want a break. Well, yeah, I know, and she does too. So you can have a break, but you need to cover her so she can have a break too. There has to be some point where it's mutual satisfaction. And that's what I'm talking about with marriage too. A lot of times what guys do, especially religious people, is they make it where it's okay to mistreat your spouse because I'm the head of the house. Well, that's fine, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to say you have to undo that. But being the head of the house doesn't mean you don't do anything in the house and you don't contribute at all to the household. Going to work every day, that's, that's awesome, totally admirable. But that's not all your job is to do. If that's what your job was, you could hire a maid and not get married. But see, people like your wife have needs, basic needs, and it's not okay to ignore those and say, I've got something bigger going on. Um, also, don't make decisions without them. We, I see this on both sides, you know, you, um, which a lot of these things I see on both sides. Um, but the first point there about helping your partner, I, I hear men say that more than women, you know. Um, well, I, I was I was helping her with this, or I don't want to help her with that, and it's like, well, okay, whatever. Um, but the same thing here, don't make decisions without them. I see a lot of women spending money without talking to the man first, and I see a lot of men um, just kind of doing their own thing without any kind of consent from the woman. Oh, I'm hanging out with the guys. Oh, well, thanks for letting me know. See what I mean? Like... You can't make decisions without them. Now, if it's something small, I mean, there needs to be some kind of a communication here. Like, if I spend money, how much do I need? How, how cheap does it have to be before I get you involved? If I spend $5, do I need to tell you about that? You know what I mean? Whatever it needs, it needs to be, whatever it is, it needs to be something that's mutually agreed upon. And it's really, really helpful if both people have the same rules. If it's wrong for her to spend money on the credit card without you, then it's wrong for you to spend the money on the credit card without her. So I mean, stuff like that. Um, once again, not trampling on anybody's religious or political beliefs. <clears throat> I know there's kind of a push right now that, that women shouldn't be submitted to men. I disagree. In marriage, both are supposed to be submitted to each other. You, you can't have a beneficial marriage if... You know, they're each off doing their own thing. You know, well, I'm the head of the house, so I get to spend the money all that I want and make all the decisions and do whatever I want, and she just has to be okay with that. That's not really marriage. Um, let, um, another point here, let sex be mutual. Let it be something that both of you guys enjoy. 
Um, if your partner doesn't want to have sex, that's probably a sign that something's wrong with the marriage that you should probably tend to. Um, if left unchecked, it will have negative effects on your marriage. Um, sex is just a great way of helping two people to get over their uh, differences. It's very hard to be mad at somebody when you're naked with them. Just kind of a difficult thing to do. There's a certain level of intimacy that happens in, 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 in sex that it just kind of reminds you that you're both equals. You're both here. She doesn't exist for your pleasure. You don't exist for her pleasure. You exist for mutual gratification. That is the idea of marriage. Um, <clears throat> so sex shouldn't be forced, obviously. Um, another point here, hold them to the same standard as you. Once again, this is nothing criticizing anybody's religious views or whatever. If you think that husband is the head of the household or not, I don't care. That doesn't affect this statement. You shouldn't hold anybody to a different standard than you yourselves are held to. You know, like you hear parents say, do what I say, not what I do. Well, if you're not doing it, well, you shouldn't really expect your child to do it. You know, um, oh, well, I can, I can cuss and drink and smoke, but you shouldn't cuss and drink and smoke. I can sleep around and look at porn, but you shouldn't sleep around and look at porn. Well, that's not really a realistic expectation. Kids emulate what they see in us. Um, so as this applies to marriage, you, you have to learn to hold your, your spouse to the same standard as you yourself want to be held and hold yourself to. Um, raising children is another great example. I don't change the diapers, she changes the diapers. Well, last time I checked, the child was made by both of you. And a marriage is a contract that says, hey, we're in this together, which means it really is up to you to um, take turns with that. I mean, it shouldn't just be up to her to feed, uh, put to sleep, uh, give a bath, um, uh, the thing I just said, uh, change diapers. It shouldn't be that. That's not a quality in marriage. And once again, that has nothing to do with who's the head of the household. That has to do with... You are both parents, and I know it's, oh, well, that, you know, it's not a man's job to, no, no, get that idea out of your mind. There's nothing in the Bible that, that, that should make it out to be that a man shouldn't um, also uh, nurture and, um, you know, c connect with their kids. Men don't have to be hardened and distant. They don't have to be like that. I mean, look at God, the perfect father, and is he distant with us? Does he just talk to us only when he wants to discourage us and, and, and discipline us? Well, no, I mean, no. So, um, I think that's kind of an important point. So anyways, um, don't don't expect for you to get a get a gel free card, whereas your spouse has to just kind of uh, learn to live with it. That's just not uh, not fair. And in marriage, you really want um, a system where both people, once again, that's the whole idea of marriage, both people um, can win. If you just are in it for the sex, well, then they have prostitutes for that. If you're just in it um, for uh, a maid, well, they have people you can hire for that. Marriage is about joint togetherness, unity, that kind of stuff. So. Um, I hope that that kind of challenges you to step up your game and try harder.